everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're going to give it another minute or so just to let any final people join and then we'll get started. Um, I hope you're all excited for today's topic, which is going over our mobile app from the perspective of admins and then also going through the, uh, the app as perspective as an employee as well and see what those key differences are. Um, like I said, let's give it another minute. I see plenty, a lot of people are joining in today, so that's good to see. Um, and then a few more. And like I said, we'll get started going from there. Um, just a side note, my colleague Jonas is joining me. Um, he's gonna be hidden. He'll be available uh, to answer your questions live. So if you have any questions, just uh, enter them in that little questions and answer section you might see on your screen and he'll be able to answer them right away. We're also going to save a bit of time at the end to just, you know, take a minute, um, reflect on what was discussed and then an final, you know, uh, answer any final questions that might come up as well. Um, of course, if you, you know, you watch the today's webinar and then a question pops up later on in the day or tomorrow, et cetera, or anything in general with the app, you can always reach out to our support team um, and we'll be, and we'll be happy to help you with that. Or even uh, if you want to, we can book a call and go through the system together as well, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, all right, I think, I think that's enough time and we'll go ahead and get started for the day. All right, um, introducing myself, my name's Austin. I am a client growth manager here at Param. Um, you, some of you might uh, have seen me before, either we've worked together uh, or you've been attending our previous webinars, um, which I've been hosting. Um, so good to see you again and good to introduce myself to the new uh, attendees. All right, going into the topic though is again, we're gonna be going over the Param app um, and then going, like I said, going over the perspective of an employee and going over that perspective from as an admin user themselves. So let's get into the actual agenda. All right, um, first off, we're gonna start in the perspective of a manager, go through the settings, seeing what is currently available. Um, I also try to point out as much as I can on what, how, what the differences are and what accesses you'll get or capabilities you'll get from the mobile app compared to say you're accessing it typically from a web browser, laptop, computer, et cetera. Um, then we'll go in and I will introduce one of the new app features. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and so this is something that we are planning on releasing very soon, but we do actually have partially released uh, for iOS. So I'll go into that. So please be patient. Then we're gonna go over the mobile app for the employees as mentioned before. And then finally, we're gonna go over push notifications and reminders. So some of these can be accessed via the mobile app. Some of them are accessed via the web browser. So laptop, desktop, et cetera, like that. All right. Then let's go and just jump right into the app. So I'm gonna be staring down because I'm gonna be operating directly from my mobile phone, but I do have it shared up on the screen and we can see that right here. So from your perspective, all you need to simply do as an admin, if there's admins, majority of you I'm assuming are admins, um, simply just need to tap into the Param app. Of course, I've already logged in, but of course you do your typical login procedure. And what you're gonna be looking at right now is gonna be their, your calendar. Very similar to you know that schedule uh, page that you're looking at through the web browser, but we're looking at it, of course, from our handheld device. Um, as you see with the variety of the, uh, you know, the whole, whole month, we're seeing a variety of colors, um, dots, et cetera. This means that there are shifts on those days. And as we're seeing, we're looking at the 25th currently today, we are seeing that we have some shifts with Crimson Castle. Um, we have some for Horizon Hall, Liberty Loft, Maxwell Security, Phoenix Plaza, et cetera, et cetera. And there's also a little bit of text under each one of those. We're gonna be looking and we can, that text is uh, giving us indications of how many of those shifts are say allocated, uh, requested or open. So you can see with Crimson Castle right here, we're gonna, oops. Uh, go back, I won't jump into that just yet. We're seeing that all shifts are allocated. We're seeing that number, that number is one. That means there's one shift at Crimson Castle. As we go down a little bit further down the list, we're seeing that Horizon Hall is having 10 shifts with a little bit of like a, a pie chart display to show that ratio there. So we have two, 
um, two filled in. And if I actually go in and dive deeper, out of those 10, we are seeing that um, we have four current, or excuse me, three right here. Uh, sorry, four here, three of them uh, are currently associated with an individual. Bella itself, that that's like a greenish color. That means that person is currently working that shift. If I go ahead and click on it, we're actually seeing that individual shift right there. Um, in this in this situation, we see that Bella hasn't even clocked in yet. Bella is late. Um, otherwise, typically we would see their amount of time that they've been clocked in for. Um, going into Ben Turner, what we've what we have in the system, what we have in the system is we've assigned this shift and we're waiting for their confirmation. And that's what the confirm means. We could, as admins, we can also confirm that shift by simply clicking that confirm button right there. So that's been done. The app processes it. And we're seeing a notification up at the top saying Ben is currently late. Just because that's current day, that shift started at 9 a.m. Um, do apologies. This is all for demo purposes. So we're looking at that. Going through, basically, this page allows you to look at what are those shifts for that day, next day, previous day, current day, and so on. Um, up in the then scrolling down, as we can see here, we can also go into, as you see, the previous day, or excuse me, the next days, we see unpublished. So if you're familiar, if you are super, very familiar with the system, unpublished means that those individuals are not yet aware of those shifts um, being assigned to their schedule. You can go into those up, unpublished shifts and click publish right there. That sends an, uh, a notification out to them via the mobile app, which we're seeing up in the top here, a couple of examples. Um, and therefore, we can then uh, just wait for their confirmation. As you can see, well, I'll go ahead as an admin. I can simply uh, confirm that myself as well, or you simply just wait for that person's confirmation. Um, going back to that calendar page here, let's go, let's go back to, say, today, back today. There we go. Um, what I want to point out here is, additionally is we're going to have another section up in the top right before we start diving into the other capabilities. Up here, that top right, this is gonna be our timesheet approval. So if you're approving timesheets, you're probably familiar that you've been doing it from the web browser. That's gonna be on the timesheet list um, within, the, within the system. You can go ahead and do that directly from the Param app. You can see that there. So uh, this is actually the actions required and then going further into the actions required is we're going actually into those timesheets, excuse me. So we can see that a door supervisor position right there, uh, another door supervisor, security guard, et cetera, a store supervisor for uh, Brooke. We can go into those just as you would basically through the web browser and review that information. If you need to adjust any sort of time, be like, okay, actually she showed up a, an hour earlier because we needed her. Go ahead and click okay on that. And then you can go down and approve that timesheet. All good, um, and you get that information there. Again, of course, a lot of the information you're still you're going to be seeing the same, or excuse me, you're going to be start to see the same data that you would see on the on a system, but it's conveniently located in your health, handheld device. Um, you can also see any sort of shift applications. So these are people that are applying for shifts. So you can see, oh, Grayson Max Well Max has applied for this shift. We can accept or reject that app. We can accept or reject that application. As you see here, we can see if there's any notes associated with the shift. We can see those locations. We can see the date, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you want to, you know, you're going to have a variety of people looking at uh, applying for that shift. Potentially, you can go to that profile. You can go see the data about them. See, you know, whatever whatever helps you decide who would be the best person to work that shift. You could go ahead and do it from your phone right there. Going back to that schedule page, um, the, this brings me into that additional feature that we are, we are currently have available for iOS, but we're in development and will soon release for Android devices. And this is actually gonna be shifts on the go. So I wanna bring that up by bringing over into some slides here. So unfortunately I've had, I'm utilizing an Android device right now, but I do have some screenshots of an uh, iOS device. And it's as simple as just simply a plus button right there. So from this page, that schedule page, all you need to do is simply click on that plus button. 
It brings up create a new shift. And then you fill in the details as you would through the web browser, typically, um, you know, your start end time, the date, the, if there's any sort of break information, you would select that location, select that position, um, how, whoops, uh, select how many of those do you need? Do you need one only for you? Do you only need one door supervisor? Do I only need one nurse, et cetera, et cetera. You would just need to select that from that page there. Uh, and, and then create and publish. Or as you can see here, we also have the ability just to create. So maybe you're just re you're in communication with a client. They need someone tomorrow. You happen to be out and about with your uh, doing some stuff and you just need to create it real quick so you don't forget. And then you'll go back to the office and finish assigning it to someone else. And then so you can then publish it from there. Um, so that's our new shifts on the go. Again, that's available currently for iOS, but we are going to be releasing it soon for Android. Um, going back into the, uh, the app, let's go down into these icons below. So what we're looking at here is going to be my schedule. So this is yourself. If you are actually working some shifts as well, maybe you're a, um, location supervisor working there alongside your employees. Maybe you're an admin, a, a man, a, a department manager, et cetera. This is gonna be you know, your schedule. You can go in, you can see your shift. As you see here, I am currently clocked in. I have a couple buttons here. One is to I'm on site. Uh, I am gonna show you this as well from the employee's perspective that this is a simple button that when you, when you press it, it's sending out the GP cor GPS coordinates to you know, the system and it will show that, okay, you are on actually on location at the time of the shift, et cetera. You can also do the same thing. If you're unfortunately a bit concerned an employee is not on site, you can call them, ring them up, um, ask them, please press the I'm on site button. And then you can see if they're actually on site. The other one is the start the break button right there. Um, easy as just click, oh, okay. So I'm out of radius because I had, I did set this up for the UK, but I'm out of country. Um, and we, I do have geofence located. And then we also have the slide to clock out button right down there. Um, so sliding, clocking out is as easy as such. Unfortunately, because I have the location set up in the UK, I'm not currently in the UK. Um, it's gonna give me the radius check as well. Um, so if I go ahead and click clock out, it's saying that I'm not within that 500 meter radius. So this is also a very good opportunity to show you what that geofencing is and what it does. Um, so this, if an employee, um, was say at their home and they were tried to, they attempted to clock in, um, and they were running a bit late, this would basically be the exact same message they would be receiving. Um, and until they got within that 500 meter radius of that, uh, that shift. Um, so actually turns out to be a good little mistake. Um, go ahead and press okay. And we'll just let it proceed for now. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to point out a few different items here. So with regards to the shift itself, we can go and look at the shift information. We can go and look at the location. We can see any sort of like details that maybe you as admin have entered for that said uh, location. So I have a good example here is indicating where you are allowed to park, what the door code is, how to get into the building, that sort of deal. Um, what we have then additionally is any sort of notes for the particular shift. And this one, it says, check in with Oliver on arrival. So this is these, these are the kind of things that you would be adding into that notes section when you're creating a shift through the web browser. Um, and as I mentioned before, that location details, those are in the location description through that locations page. Excuse me. All right, going back then, Let's go into the next, oh, and apologies, up in the top right will be a, um, a couple different views that you can also do. So we have the view which would set it up maybe as like a, uh, a scrolling calendar. In this case, I'd only have a shift for the 25th assigned to me um, going back. Then we also have the plus button. This would be for setting my availability or requesting time off. So um, I'm unavailable, say, for the 30th. So I can go ahead and set my unavailability. That's going to then notify my, you know, further ups or anyone else in the team that I am not able to work any shifts on that day. And then that's been blocked out. Again, you can also put, I prefer, you know, you yourself, 
can put I preferred work, or you can also request your time off as well from that. Going then into time clock, what we're looking at a time clock is we're also seeing, we're gonna be seeing say our shift. So I'm current, I've been currently logged in for two hours and 18 minutes in counting at Phoenix Plaza. We have indicator of who is currently late for their shift. So you as an admin can be like, okay, what's the deal, Chloe um, or Bella, Ben, Freya and Grayson. Um, you can go in and investigate um, as an admin, because you have admin rights, you can also just say like, okay, um, maybe you're on site as a, a location supervisor and you are actually with Chloe right there. You can, you as an admin can go ahead and clock Chloe in by simply sliding that uh, icon there. You can also maybe uh, from this perspective, you can also tap that staff is on site button similar to I am on site that we saw a moment ago but this one is just gonna be linked to that person's time timesheet. Same, same information regards to the shift information. We're gonna see location. We're gonna see some sort of pay, pay information, um, any sort of breaks, et cetera, et cetera. All the stuff that we saw before um, going in and we can also see the active running shifts, very similar to my current running shift. You and an admin, you as an admin um, or a location supervisor can roll through you'll be seeing, if you're looking super location supervisor, you're gonna be seeing the ones that are relevant to you and your, your permissions. And then on the third one, or the last, excuse me, the fourth one, the last one is gonna be any sort of upcoming shifts for say later that day. Um, at this moment, I don't have any for, for example purposes. Lastly, let's, or almost lastly, we're gonna be going over the actual people's list. So this is your ability to look at any sort of crucial information you might need, some contact details, some qualifications, emergency contacts, this sort of information. Um, you can see all their pro, uh, all their positions associated with them. So it's just a quick reference. Um, again, this is another place to approve timesheets. Um, so we can go in here and approve that timesheet if we'd like to. So that's been good to go. That's synchronizing. We're happy we can proceed. Um, we also have other confirmed uh, shifts. So we're seeing these, um, one for today, or sorry, these are, for, oh, apologies, these are previous ones. So we're seeing those, those as well. You know, typical information that you might need to get for that person quickly on the go. And then lastly, let's go over the system settings. Of course, we have my own profile. We have timesheets, which could use further approval. We have absences, availability, pay, uh, contacts, any sort of contact information. Um, for say your company. So let's keep that in mind. This is gonna be your company-based contacts. Um, then we have additional settings. We have general notifications. So that is just going of course to my phone. Um, then we have company settings. So this is gonna be very similar. There's a bit of limitation of course, uh, compared to what we're gonna be seeing from uh, the, uh, mo uh, sorry, the web browser, but there is actually con a considerable amount of things that you can adjust within the app itself. As you can see here, I'm not gonna go in line by line, but feel free to explore that if you have the app downloaded and you have a system. Um, but pretty much from there, uh, as you can see, this allows you to easily adjust anything, contact or support department. And then uh, if you're making any sort of adjustments or you think that something is not showing as necessary, you can resync your app manually by simply pressing that resynchronization with param button right there. That resynchronizes and it gets everything up to date and you should be seeing any adjustments. Sometimes simultaneously, you'll be operating from the web browser on a laptop then checking it out on a phone. And sometimes it takes a few moments and this is where you can manually adjust it from there. All right, um, let me just simply move this page over and I will log out. Actually, I'll show you exactly how to log out, which is very simple. You simply click the log out button. Uh, yes, we want to log out. So that's logging me out. And I will quickly log in as, <clears throat> excuse me. I will quickly log in as an employee without showing you my password. All right, I, I did it, I really did it. 
All right, so we are currently logged in as an employee. Um, to be fair, there's not too much variation, luckily. Um, however, we're gonna start seeing there's a couple things missing. Um, so what we're looking at here is this calendar page, as you would expect. So the current schedule, this is a shift that is currently assigned. As we saw before, I uh, I am currently logged in as Grayson Wellmax. So we got it. We, if you noticed that earlier, we got a notification that uh, this employee was actually uh, late for their shift. So what we can do, we go ahead and click um, log in. So very simple process. Go ahead and go to that shift from that schedule page once you're logged in. Slide that uh, clock in. Slide that over, and we're good to go. That starts the clock, um, and we you know we do our shift. We get the job done. Um, then what we're looking at here is going to be the clock history. So as you can see, we've clocked in at this time. Um, we as employees will be able to see that. We can also then uh, show uh, that we're on site. So I mentioned that a bit earlier that um, that if you were a bit concerned about your employee, then to just uh, call them up, see, click, click on that I'm on site button, and then that will give that indicator. Each one of these um, also shows the um, the GPS coordinates. So actually, I can go ahead and click on that. And that's going to be opening up our map section. And we can go and see exactly where that clocking details were. Um, we can also start our break. And then, of course, clock out. Going back then, actually, we'll go back to the schedule. Same thing. We can change that layout. We can go ahead and see it from a scrolling view. Or we can see it from a calendar view. Same thing on the top right, we're gonna be seeing availability, unavailability and requesting time off. Um, and then your employees, they're actually wanting to pick up some shifts. This is gonna be where they're gonna be going to the available sh available shifts option right there. Um, and currently we don't have any other available shifts on today, but we can go ahead and see for tomorrow. Uh, I wanna point out right now is we have two shifts exactly or you know exactly identical except for the fact that one is a, uh, a particular color and the other is like a pinkish color. If I go into this one, it look, we're gonna see that it's an open shift. It gives the breakdown, sees the pay rate. We have an apply, an, we have apply and unavailable. Uh, the other one is a ch it's changed color because if you notice, we actually already applied for that shift. So that's changed, that's changed. We're waiting for an admin to approve of that shift um, going further in there. Then going in, of course, they would be able to apply for any shifts within there. You as an admin would just simply need to approve that uh, that employee's application. Going in here, we can see, uh, I just want to point out, is we have a current shift running. So that gives you that detail breakdown. Um, uh, okay, well, I wanna, what I want to also point out is I don't have a good example of it, but if you're, because I was logging in from a admin perspective to an employee perspective, but from your employees, in, from your employees' perspective, if they have the app downloaded and notifications turned on, um, they will actually be receiving notifications constantly that they are late for their shift, and that would be you. Uh, you would not be able to. They will not be able to remove that uh, notification until they've actually clocked in. So that is something I want to just simply point out. All right, moving in then to the final section for the employees' perspective because it's quite you know. Uh, quite slimmed down, just the necessary information. We're going to have basically the same same data that we saw for the admin's perspective. So we have, but we have our say our own timesheets. Nothing at the moment, for example's sake. Um, but we have that. We have our our absences. We see our current allowance for absences, availability, our pay. Again, contact details for the um, the company itself any sort of supervisors, as you can see there, I'm currently set up and then same thing for settings and then notification that brings me back to my phone and then any sort of um, any sort of date, date format, et cetera. Again, resynchronization button. So sometimes if they're having issue, just ask them to resync, um, you can do that. And honestly, that pretty much just sums up the entire app um, from both the admin's perspective and the employee's perspective. Um, what I want to go over now then is actually just uh, the final final topic, which was notifications, managing notifications, um, 
This can be done through the web browser. Apologies, this would be here. So from I have this screen split into two sections. This is the, an admin's perspective. So this is gonna be what they'll be able to see. If you go over here, you can simply go system settings and any sort of notifications. This is gonna give you that breakdown of the in-app push notifications. So as you can see, some of these can be turned on and off. You can further break those down there to see exact what is, uh, uh, you know, even, even further customization of what is being notified about. Um, then we also have clocking data, et cetera. This is also good to see where you, if you want to indicate a, uh, uh, sorry, if you want to have an email also sent over um, for those same things, then you can certainly do so. But honestly, since we launched the push notifications with the app, it's a lot of my clients have actually said that's been extremely beneficial for them in communicating with their with their staff. Um, the at this point, the emails is just an extra effort that they want to they want to add on top of that layer of notification and communication. Um, the third column, I might as well I might as well take the opportunity to speak about this is. We also offer the ability to send out an SMS text message um, if you want to. Um, this is for a few different areas within Param. I'm not going to go over it today, um, but it is if you're wanting that additional capability. Maybe some people don't have. Um, maybe some people are just not very great with managing their their phone and their apps, but they're a little bit better at responsive at text messages. We do offer that additional service. The key thing to keep in mind though, is there is a monthly fee for a designated phone number that we assign strictly to you um, for processing those text messages. And then each message of those does have a, um, a text message delivery fee. Um, we'll have to go, we can discuss that on one-on-one -on -one if that's something you're interested in. And then we can go over that unique, uh, you know, that individual pricing rate for those text messages. But I just wanted to bring it up while we're looking at it. Um, from the end user or the staff member perspective, um, this, the same things can be looked at from here. There's a little bit of settings. Um, most of the push notifications for the app are going to be managed by the admins, um, but they, you, like the employee themselves can adjust email notifications for when they're logged in from the laptop themselves. Um, all right. I think that pretty much sums up everything. The last thing I wanted to mention though, is that if you do have any questions, um, we're gonna leave the chat open for a bit, a few more minutes longer. Um, then if you also want to have any sort of like one-on-one -on -one consultations, feel free to reach out, we'll be happy to help. Um, and then lastly, if, um, if you, because we went over the perspective of the employee, if you think that it would be very beneficial for your employees to have a designated webinar session for how to use Param, how to use the app, um, please let us know in, in the in the comments or in the questions section, um, because we are constant. We we do have a set schedule on topics we'd like to cover through webinars, but we do want to understand what is really important to you guys um, and important to our clients. So feel free to let us know if that's something that you and your organization would benefit from, um, and we'll add it to the future webinar schedule. All right, um, like I said, thank you for attending. Feel free to reach out with any questions and we'll leave it open for a few bit, few more minutes um, just to answer any final questions that might have um, might be coming up. Otherwise, yeah, thank you for attending.